Good morning and good afternoon. This is Ida Rose Sylvester, founder of Silicon Valley Link. Uh, we are a firm that helps companies expand their global footprint from uh, all around the world to the United States. We are particularly interested in virtual technologies and how social media and new technology helps companies come together across the world. I'm here today with my partner, Eric Young, um, who helps us uh, in Europe. Eric, can you introduce yourself? Hi. Thanks, Ida Rose. I'm Eric Jan Kudijk. I'm a managing uh, partner of Into Marketing, a company offering uh, consultancy services, project management, uh, and we also specialize in uh, new technologies, new ways uh, uh, to help uh, communicating uh, with uh, each other. So that's me. And if it wasn't for new technology, EJ and I never would have met. We actually were together at a conference in, in in the real world here in Silicon Valley about a year ago. Uh, but we were the only two people on a back channel discussing the technologies and companies we were watching uh, and got into a bit of a discussion because of the, the availability of having Twitter in the background to help us connect. And uh, eventually we ran into each other in the real world. So basically using the hashtag on Twitter to, uh, to communicate with each other and create a, a, a virtual team almost, uh, I don't know. That's right. <laughs> so actually, uh, uh, today the panel setting, what you, uh, what you see is uh, we are connecting the virtual world with the real world, uh, meaning that uh, uh, the way we present today is a combination uh, of, uh, of two worlds. And um, uh, you, you're watching to, uh, to, to certain streams which are uh, bring, uh, brought together in, uh, in one virtual world you're looking at. And we will explain it in more detail uh, later what, uh, what really is happening in uh, what are all the uh, possibilities? So, I don't know the description of the topics today. <laughs> uh, well, first, I would like to introduce our two distinguished speakers. Um, uh, first, we have Jojo Dara, also known as Yolanda Masterbrook Dober. Uh, she will be there at special, uh, in, I'm sorry, in Second Life. Uh, she specializes in training and community management in virtual worlds and has had some extensive experience working with our virtual Holland. She's worked with ING, uh, Vodafone, Herman Miller, and several other companies helping them develop successful business presences in Second Life. She also organizes conferences around these platforms and brings people together to learn more about how to use them in both social and professional settings. And on the right, Eric, I would can you like introduce? To, yeah, of course. <laughs> on the right, uh, I would like to introduce our avatar digital brower in real life, Tim Gore. Tim has been uh, with Nokia for almost 10 years in uh, various roles. He was a communication officer for Nokia Online Services in 2002 when he was winning a Nokia Venture Challenge Award for his concept of virtual characters. It was basically a mobile application concept using avatars on a mobile device. He's an expert in the Web 2.0 applications and digital marketing and entered Second Life in late 2006 to model an avatar of the current Nokia CEO, Oli Pekka Kasuo, to deliver a keynote speech on his behalf in front of 500 attendees at the Nokia 2.0 conference in that time. He has been responsible for Nokia presence in Second Life and has acted as evangelist for virtual worlds ever since. So. Yeah, um, Ida Rose already uh, introduced you uh, the topics we would like uh, to cover uh, today. And uh, the first topic is uh, if uh, uh, should virtual worlds be taken seriously uh, for businesses or is it just uh, a game? Uh, Yoyo Dara, do these virtual worlds offer a true business opportunity? Hello, everybody. This is Jojo Dara calling in from Second Life. Um, yes, there are multiple opportunities, um, like the communication and interaction with your consumers. But not only that, you can also communicate and interact with your colleagues, business partners, opportunity makers, or press investors. For any kind of individual or organization that wants to interact, with you could benefit from it. That's a, quite a broad audience. It can bring an, a really a total new and also a broad audience and also collaborations uh, to your companies. Uh, for instance, things of the collaboration between businesses and universities all over the world. Uh, universities really adopted the virtual worlds uh, rapidly in, in these couple of years. Um, and especially um, also in, in social virtual worlds like, uh, like 
a second life where an individual can create. Uh, suddenly, people discover themselves by creating uh, own uh, virtual goods or or by even scripting. And okay. yeah, uh, uh, virtuals like Second Life is providing that. Uh, so there are there are other virtual worlds. So the technology we're using today is called Second Life, which is I think uh, in, 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 in Second World, which is well known. So digital, do you do you agree with this? Hi, Iran and uh, everybody online. Yes, I do agree with this. Um, uh, we have a very short time today, so uh, and a lot of a lot of information to to cover. So, yes, if, when it comes to opportunities for businesses, there are really uh, many of them, um, and and it really depends on which angle you look at uh, this tech, this virtual world technology. Because what we see now already today is a glimpse of the future of the internet happening around us. And when we talk about the 3D web, we talk not, o not only about virtual world technology, but also how that relates to real world, uh, mm. uh, real world around us. And in many ways, the 3D web is already here, but we just fail to notice it. And once we start to notice it and start to understand the virtual world technology, then we start to see the opportunities. So uh, is this change also driving the demand for richer browsing uh, capabilities? For example, the traditional 2D browser, like Internet Explorer or Firefox, will it migrate to a 3D one on the desktop? I think it, uh, it already has, actually, um, uh, for, for some of us, at least. Um, if I look at myself, I uh, don't have to leave Second Life to uh, update my Twitter account or Facebook status. I don't have to leave Second Life to uh, uh, browse the web. So in many ways, uh, on, the, on the PC... That I see a virtual world game if you have to take levels as social worlds... Are, yeah, you don't have to have levels, for instance. And so, first, let's change mm -hmm. that perspective, of course. <laughs> um, even though, even though I must say that some uh, companies do gaming virtual worlds to um, uh, practice on leaderships, that I must admit. So, therefore, it's also very useful. Um, and um, sorry. And well, um, okay. Um, I th I think that uh, that uh, well, how we I can give you some examples of how we yeah. have used it over yeah. the past, cool. and we cool. have used it for purposes such as uh, lead. Leadership management uh, workshops and training. We have used it for recruitment. We have used it for uh, getting closer to our customers and having real conversations in real time with real customers. And that really, um, uh, really shifts our perspective on how these technologies can be used. And that's also what we see happening around us is that, that virtual worlds are more and more mixing with real life to form this new type of reality, which we call augmented reality or at Nokia we like to call it mixed reality because yeah. we see the convergence of these virtual and the real uh, to form um, yeah, basically a better perspective in which we will greatly improve human machine interaction I believe. So does this mean a true added value for big corporations like the one you are working for or is it also interesting for smaller organizations uh, Digistar? What do you think? Well definitely it creates opportunities for big organizations in terms of cost savings uh, for traveling, for, for example. But uh, I think uh, smaller companies have huge advantages over bigger companies because they don't have the hurdles that big companies need to overcome to become successful mm -hmm. uh, in applying some of these new and innovative business models. Mm -hmm. And what about the investments done in Yoya Dara? Don't big corporations have a huge head start? No, not really necessary, as I mentioned before in the introduction, uh, uh, everybody can install these virtual worlds and use the tools that is given to you. So also smaller companies can do that and they can set up their own uh, business environments, uh, also for meetings and, and, and also for, yeah, of course, uh, 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 customer interaction, um, yeah, all kinds, yeah. So it didn't mean any uh, great investments to, uh, yeah. To have to be in a virtual world. Well, I, I think there's 
you know, very little investment in technology. It's a technology that many mm -hmm. people use at home. But how do you get people to believe that it's a valuable technology?